Hello, this is a tutorial for workflow practices and formatting requirements in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to walk you through best practices for presenting and saving your work. So first you'll save, open up a new file, File New, and this dialog box has a whole bunch of options, many of which you don't need to worry about at all. You want to set up new document profile, click on the drop down arrow and there are a bunch of different options. I would recommend um, you know just sticking with either the print or the web option. Print obviously if you ever want to pr pr print your design then you'll want to um, use that option. If you think you're just going to have your design displayed on the web only in digital format go ahead and select the web option doesn't really matter which one you choose. Um, most important thing to do is to click on this little drop down arrow for advanced options and make sure that your color mode is set to RGB. This is very important. RGB color mode is going to give you a much wider range of colors to work with and that's important when you're working digitally to have that variety. Um, you can always then translate things into CMYK if needed but a um, good idea to start with RGB. So select RGB there and then hit OK. You'll get a new blank document and then you can start designing. So at this point you are creating your design and let's say you've uh, been working on it for a good 15 minutes or so. This would be a good point in time to stop and actually save what you have so far so that if your computer crashes you won't lose all the work you've done, right? So um, you'll want to go to File, Save and just go ahead and save your document in the native Adobe Illustrator format. So this is the .ai format and what this is going to do is give you all of the information needed to ever be able to um, revise your work so that if you want to go back to your drawing later on or your design rather not drawing um, go back to your design later on and work on it some more you can easily um, have all of the layer information all of the paths all of the uh, vector graphics available to you to easily be able to edit them so that's why you always want to save a copy of what you're working on in .ai Adobe Illustrator format so make sure you select that and then give your file a name good idea to get into the habit of using correct file formatting so uh, put your last name your first name and then the week number and the assignment number and then go ahead and click on save so um, then you'll have that copy of your design saved. You can go ahead and just uh, leave all of these Illustrator options um, at the defaults. Don't worry about that. Just hit OK and there you go. So you've got a, no a, a native Adobe Photoshop file version saved and you can keep working. So just keep working on your design and let's say you feel like you are pretty much finished and this is where what you want your final product to look like at this point you'll want to save once more so go to file save and then what you need to do is you need to export this because you don't want to present the Adobe Illustrator file to the classroom um, to your classmates you want to present a JPEG to class so you need to export a JPEG so first thing you want to you um, need to do is clean up the presentation notice that there's a little um, white box surrounding our design right here this is telling me that if I export this drawing right now it's going to um, basically look like this. This is what it's going to look like and it's going to have all this white space surrounding it. So if I go to File, Save for Web and Devices then, and I zoom out, this is what um, is going to be presented. Um, but I don't really want all this extra white space surrounding my drawing, so or my design rather. Um, so what I want to do is crop away that extra white space and I use that, I do that using the artboard tool. So I come over here to this little artboard tool on the lower left and click on it and what it does is it frees up those edges and gives me a little um, slider so that I can grab these little handles and I can crop and zoom in on my design and kind of clean up the presentation. You can also add space if you want to add space around it um, and this just gives you um, basically uh, the best presentation. So you always want to leave somewhat of a little border around your design and just kind of uh, 
clean up your presentation and make sure you got it where you want it. When you're done, just click on the little black arrow tool to exit out of that and notice that the little canvas area has changed in size. So now when I go to File, Save for Web and Devices, and I'll zoom out on Control minus or Command minus on the Mac. Then um, notice that the presentation is much better now. That's exactly what we want to have happen right there. So only other thing you need to do is make sure that this is set to JPEG. Best to just kind of stick with JPEGs because they work for most things. Um, so that's pretty simple. Um, and I usually just leave the quality at 100. You can reduce it down to about 80. I wouldn't go much lower than that so that you don't lose um, resolution. You don't want it to be too. Uh, too pixelated or low quality or fuzzy or anything so just leave it at that and then click save and then of course when you save your document make sure you save it using the correct formatting of last name, first name, the week number and the assignment number and you're good to go. So basically what that's going to do is that's going to cr save a JPEG for you and that way you can upload the JPEG to class and present that to everybody and but you'll still have the native.ai file um, saved so you have two copies one jpeg and one .ai and the .ai file is the one that you can then go back to to edit because um, you know in the .ai file you can easily move things around you can um, play with the vectors etc it just gives you lots of flexibility you can't do all of this with the jpeg so that's why you always want to make sure you save in the native format a copy of your design in the native format so that you can always go back to it to revise it or work on it some more later. Let's talk about formatting requirements and kind of the best workflow practices for working in Adobe Photoshop to create your designs for class. Um, obviously you'll start out by opening up a new file, File, New, and you're given a whole bunch of options here. Um, Go ahead and take a look at the presets here. Click on the little drop down menu menu arrow and you'll see that there are a bunch of different things here. These three here relate to print so if you think that you ever might want to print out a copy of your design you'll probably want to save, you'll probably want to work in one of these formats. However if you're just creating something for the web go ahead and choose the web format. Um, if you're only thinking that it's pretty much only going to be presented digitally then the web format is good. Um, so it doesn't really matter what you choose there but the most important thing to do is to make sure that your color mode is set to RGB color mode. That's going to give you the most flexibility and the most uh, the widest range of colors to work with when you're working digitally. So make sure you're in RGB color mode and don't worry too much about the other settings and then just hit OK. Then you'll get a new document <clears throat> And then you can start designing. You can start uh, working on uh, your project and let's say you've been working on it for a good 15 minutes or so. At this point it's going to be an excellent idea to go ahead and save a copy of what you have so far. So you want to save it in the native Photoshop document format so that you can easily go back and edit your design if you want to because Photoshop document format has a bunch of information that it saves for you such as the layers and the shapes and all of the um, information that you would need to be able to more easily and readily edit your design if you want to go back to it and revise it and work on it some more. So it's always a good idea to save in native uh, one copy of your file in native format. So we're going to go to File, Save and then we're going to save it as a Photoshop document. So right here under the format option, go to the drop down menu and make sure you select the one here that says .psd for Photoshop. And then give your file a title. And as far as titling, it's a good idea to get into the habit of using correct formatting for your title. So you want to choose uh, first name, last name, week number, assignment number, um, something like that. Click save and then there you go. You've got your file saved in native format. So um, then you keep working and let's say you've worked in the, for another hour and you've got this design absolutely perfect and you're ready to present it to the world. Um, so you want to share it in the classroom, right? Well, first thing you want to do is make sure you save again. So you want to make sure that you save a copy of the native Photoshop document. So go to File, Save to go ahead and just save this file once more to make sure that you have all the information saved in the Photoshop document format. Now for presenting in class you want to present a JPEG not a PSD file. So the PSD file is too big we don't really need all that information 
um, when we look at your work in, in class. We just need uh, something optimized for web presentation. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a copy of your file. You're going to go to Image Duplicate and it's going to, you can go ahead and leave the default set there for now, it's going to make a duplicate copy of your file. So now you have two files open. Um, you'll probably want to go ahead and close the .psd file so that you don't accidentally change that. And now with your copy of your design, you're going to optimize this for web presentation. So the way to do that is, um, first thing you want to do, make sure that you have cropped and got uh, and zoomed in and kind of figured out how you're going to present your design. So I don't want nearly as much white canvas around it, so I'm going to crop away a lot of that excess white canvas and hit enter or return. Um, another handy thing the crop tool can do is the crop tool can actually add um, white canvas to the edges. So if you need to add more space around your design, you can um, drag the um, the markers for the crop tool out and hit enter or return and it will add more white canvas surrounding your design. So keep in mind those handy tools. Oh, and one other thing it can do, you can actually rotate it. So if you want to change the orientation of your design and um, play around with the composition, then you can do that as well. So a lot of fun things to play around with there. When you're totally satisfied with the presentation, you want to go to image, image size, and this is where you're going to um, do some initial things to reduce the file size. First thing you want to do is you want to set the resolution. So first we're going to uncheck the resample image box and set the resolution to 72 pixels per inch because that's the standard, um, basically the standard for, for pre presenting uh, digitally on the web. Then you click again the reach re sample image box and when you recheck that it opens up the pixel dimensions up top. You kind of want these to be approximately somewhere around 800 by 600 so basically kind of take a look at your design and figure out if it's wider or um, taller. So if it's wider that's a landscape format, if it's taller that's a portrait format and um, so you just kind of want the longest side to be about 800 pixels. Mine kind of looks like a square, so it doesn't really matter. I think I'm just going to go with 800 on the width, and that's good enough. And, you know, I could go smaller if I wanted to. I could go 600, just somewhere around there, and just let the let the cons proportions remain constrained. So don't try to force it to be exactly 600 by 800. Just let it go the way it, way it wants to go. As long as one, as long as the widest, longest side is is no more than 800 pixels, you're fine. So when you've done that, click OK and it kind of reduces the size but if you hit control or command plus um, then it will you can zoom back into full screen to be able to see it large um, again and then what you do is go to file save for web and devices and this is going to open up a nice big giant dialog box I'm going to kind of see if I can get it to scrunch down a little smaller and let's see can't seem to pull up the doesn't seem to want to scrunch smaller, so I'm going to have to kind of zoom, move, move around on the screen here. But basically, this is giving me um, uh, basically options for how I want to save it. Um, I would just leave this set default to JPEG. So JPEG is generally the easiest thing to do. It, it works for most things. So so make sure this is set to JPEG. You can leave the quality on high if you want to. You can um, you don't want to bring this down too too low, or you're going to get um, poor image quality. So I actually usually just leave that full on at you know 100%, which actually puts that at maximum. But uh, you know anything medium or higher is good. Don't go don't go low quality on that. And really, you don't need to worry about any of the other settings. Just leave everything else as it is. And then all you have to do is click on the save button, which I can't seem to get it to get in the screen that I'm recording. <laughs> um, so, right. But anyway, you just click Save and, okay, yeah, here we go. Click Save and then you can save your file. Um, <clears throat> when you save your file, again, make sure you're using the right formatting here, last name, first name, week number, assignment number, we can delete the words copy out of it, and it saves it as a JPEG, .jpg. So there you go, that's the file format and the optimized uh, file that you will then upload to the classroom for uh, presentation. 
and that is pretty much the 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 way you want to work because then you know once you get some feedback on your JPEG if you feel like you want to go back and work on your design some more you can open up the .psd file the native Photoshop file and be able to easily edit that and change it to um, to work on your design some more and improve it.